Chapter 2.1 Human Evolution This famous picture of human evolution seems to show a chimpanzee turning into a human. And that's how most people think it happened, that apes turned into humans. But in fact, this is all wrong. To explain who we are and where we came from, let's begin at the beginning, in Africa. Here are some of the ideas we're going to cover in this unit. Evolution. Darwinism. Natural selection. Survival of the fittest. And evolutionary psychology. Let's start with evolution. Charles Darwin, who lived from 1809 to 1882, is one of those people with whom we think. Much like Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein, Darwin's name has become synonymous with certain ideas, so much so that many people think that he is the one who came up with the idea of evolution. But, in fact, he didn't. Many people before Darwin, including his own grandfather, Erasmus, thought that animals had undergone gradual change over time. Darwin also didn't come up with the idea of survival of the fittest. That came from his contemporary, Herbert Spencer, who lived from 1820 to 1903. What Darwin contributed was the idea of natural selection, that due to random mutations, certain organisms are born better able to find food or escape from other creatures that want to eat them or to reproduce themselves. These organisms will tend to produce more offspring, meaning that their traits will be passed on to future generations. Of course, Darwin didn't know about genetic inheritance. The credit for that goes to Gregor Mendel, who lived from 1822 to 1884, or DNA, which required contributions from many scientists over many decades. Darwin also didn't say that modern humans came from apes. Rather, apes and humans had a common ancestor. The fossil record has provided evidence to show that his supposition was correct. Darwin's ideas were both embraced and ridiculed in his time. Some people saw them as a powerful explanation for observations of nature, while others thought the idea that we evolved and were not divinely created was contrary to human dignity. Of no less importance was that Darwin's ideas also harmonized with the need to explain power structures. Evolution, like history, was thought to be the story of progress, going from worse to better. Modern humans were better than brutish early humans. In the same way, certain cultures were better than others. And of course, white Europeans were at the top of the heap as the most evolved, best humans. Obviously, this was a useful truth to those who wanted to justify colonizing other lands in Africa and Asia, or in the United States to justify slavery and racism. Look at these racist cartoons from the 1800s. In this cartoon from the elite British humor magazine Punch from 1861, an ape holds a placard with the abolitionist catchphrase, Am I a man and a brother? The implication is clear. Apes are not humans, and people of African ancestry are not either. In this one from 1882 by Frederick Oper, the Irish, who were at that time colonized by the British, are portrayed as poor, lazy, and ape-like. It is entitled A King of Shanty, a shanty being a word for a shack, and the Ashanti, a people from West Africa, ironically famous for their wealth and power. Opera manages to slur both Africans and the Irish in one single image. So what was the timeline of human evolution? The last common ancestor of chimpanzees and humans lived between 5 and 10 million years ago. By 3.6 million years ago, our ancestors were walking upright, but the path to modern humans was not a straight one. These early hominids split into a diversity of lineages, all of which, save for our own, eventually went extinct. The first evidence for stone tools are marks on animal bones found in Ethiopia, alongside the fossilized skull of a three-year-old Australopithecine girl who lived 3.3 million years ago. By 1.7 million years ago, we were making more complex tools. By 1.5 million years ago, early humans were controlling fire. Dark skin evolved about 1.2 million years ago. With this protection from the sun, an upright posture, and reduced body hair, our ancestors could range widely on the African savanna. The last common ancestors of humans and Neanderthals, our longest surviving close relatives, lived between 600,000 and 800,000 years ago. The first evidence for anatomically modern humans dates from only 300,000 years ago. Let's suppose this ruler corresponds to this time span, with today being zero and one centimeter equaling 10,000 years. All of recorded history 
from the earliest writing fits into the last six millimeters. We can put the building of the Great Pyramid of Egypt at 2.6 millimeters. From our ancestral home in Africa, humans moved into the Middle East, roughly 70,000 years ago, Australia, 65,000 years ago, Asia and Europe, by 45,000 years ago, and the Americas, perhaps as early as 40,000 years ago, but certainly by 25,000 years ago. Scientists can trace this dispersal not only from archaeological sites and remains, but also genetic markers in present-day populations. We can also tell from DNA that in all areas besides Africa, our ancestors lived alongside, and probably interbred, with Neanderthals who went extinct around 40,000 years ago. As humans moved into northern climates, natural selection favored lighter colored skin to facilitate vitamin D absorption, but our most distant ancestors probably had dark skin. Earth's climate was very different in the distant past. From about 115,000 years ago to about 11,500 years ago, glaciers covered much of the Earth's surface. Their maximum extent was from about 26,000 years ago to 19,000 years ago. During this ice age, sea levels fell, land not under ice was colder and drier. When the last glacial period, abbreviated LGP, ended 11,500 years ago, and the earth grew warmer and moister, it allowed for the growth of civilizations. What were early humans like? And how can we tell without written testimony? And, as anyone who's read up about the paleo diet may wonder, how much does our ancestral environment affect us today? Were language and culture something that came about all at once during the population bottlenecks of the last ice age, or something that developed gradually? Evolutionary psychologists believe there are universal truths about human beings and human culture. We can find these constants by comparing different cultures. Some of these constants include the use of fire, language, morality, abstract thought, and the social hierarchy. In other words, are certain things always going to be present in human society? We'll look at one of these universals, that of hierarchy and inequality in society, in part two of this chapter. Here's your activity. How has Darwinism been used and misused? Use your internet search skills to find examples of how Darwinism and evolution have been used in modern societies since the 1800s. You might find cartoons, speeches, articles, songs, movie clips, or other written, visual, or audiovisual media. Ideas expressed might include primitive humans, apes, and the progress or degradation of society. For each example you find, write a paragraph critically examining how the idea of Darwinism and evolution have been used, for instance, to persuade or dissuade the audience, or to establish or maintain racist ideas. Critique the use of Darwinism and evolution as accurate or inaccurate in each case.